This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. The most important thing you can do as a human being on the planet is to get born again. But the most important thing you can do as a born again Christian is to renew your mind. A whole lot of things that are not happening, that are not changing, the questions you have, I believe at the root of it all is being serious about a day-to-day -day renewing of your mind. Trinidad and Tobago, the 2021 Virtual Change Experience is coming to your home. God is about to open some doors that no man will be able to close. God is about to set some stuff up that nobody could set up. God is about to give you favor that nobody could give favor to. The, the messages is just fully loaded with truth that our generation and our society needs today. Register now for this free event by logging on to creflodollarministries.org. Tonight I want to talk about something that I think is a really big deal and something that is happening right now that's really stopping a lot of people from, from the change and the transformation that God really wants to, them to experience by beholding Jesus, and that is a wrong perception of yourself. Perception. Uh, you, you've got to change how you see yourself. And I guess I'll start off tonight by asking you to Examine your life and ask yourself, how do I see myself? How, how do I see myself? I, I can remember having a, just a huge hunger to just want to do more for God. I, I, I want to have impact in what I'm doing. I, I don't want to waste my time. I want every day of my life to have some kind of impact on people or, or, or God is concerned with where the kingdom was concerned. And the Lord kept asking me this question, and it went on for at least a year. Um, who are you? And I kept saying, well, what do you want me to do? And he said, who are you? I, 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 thought, I, know, I thought I knew who I was. Uh, I could have got religious since they started quoting a lot of things. <laughs> One time he said, who are you? I said, I'm Creflo Dollar. He said, you still don't know who you are. It was so much deeper than your name. What's your name? He wanted to know from me, who are you? And then finally I got it that who I am is not based and determined by somebody on the outside. Who I am has been determined by the Jesus that has moved on the inside. I am the righteousness of God by faith in Jesus Christ. And I learned that everything that God will do with a Christian is when he comes to the point to realize his identity in Jesus Christ. Because everything else from that point on flows from your faith that believing no matter what happens in your life, that I am the righteousness of God by faith and the, 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 um, the profile of a righteous man, I think it's in Psalms 112, the profile of the righteous man can then be shared, shared abroad in your life because you know who you are. I'm the righteousness of God. And in a sense, I'm saying I have a right to, to what you've promised me. I'm the righteousness of God. I have a right to be bold and to be strong and to be effective. I have a right because I know who I am in Christ Jesus. And then once I begin to recognize my identity in Christ, number one, uh, it, it became very clear what my assignment was, what I needed to do to have an understanding of that. When there's confusion about your life and what you're supposed to be doing and all that kind of stuff, you need to check out your perception. How are you seeing yourself? And are you still seeing yourself based on the mistakes that you've made? 
Are you still seeing yourself, you know, based on, you know, the insecurities that were in your life? Are you still seeing yourself based on the, maybe the wounds that occurred in your life that you've not acknowledged and you've not dealt with and, and those things have assisted in shaping the perception that you have of you? Who are you? How do you see yourself? And I, and, I, and I know maybe this sounds like a motivational speech, but this is so deep and so right to work what God's trying to do in your life, and it's so limited by a person who refuses to change how he sees himself, a person who refuses to change that wrong perception of who he is. So your perception has to do with the way you think. Your perception has to do with the way you process information. It has to do with the way you view situations around you and how you view situations in your life. And sometimes we have conditioned ourselves through time that things will always be the same. And so we've got to break that mentality. And if we're going to see change in our lives, we must raise our expectations. We must believe. We must begin to, to understand even what Jesus declared in Mark chapter 9 and verse 23, where he said, all things are possible to him that believe. We've got to stop replaying our mistakes. How often are you replaying your mistakes? When you have time to lounge around the house, are you, are, how far back do you go and walk yourself up replaying your mistakes? Stop replaying how we used to be. The past is over. Say that, the past, the past is over. So treat it like it's over. It's over, treat it like it's over. You've got to understand how the enemy plays this game. It's right here. Your mind is the arena of faith. You've got to know how he plays this game. Now, Proverbs 23 and 7 is where we want to start here tonight. Proverbs 23 and 7. It's a familiar scripture, but the more and more I get a chance to look at this and to weigh it into how people are living and what they're going through. And people are going through a lot. There's a lot of stress going on in our country right now, division, all this kind of stuff that's happening. And now it's the time for us to allow the God in us to begin to shine so brightly that a worried, stress-filled world can look at you and see the light that you carry and ask, why is it that you carry your way, carry yourself the way you carry yourself? It's an opportunity for us to, to witness. It's going to be an opportunity for a great revival to hit this country. That's what I'm believing God for, amen? I'm not going to choose sides. I'm not going to choose Democrat, Republican. I ain't doing all that. I'm a Christian. I choose Jesus. And in the, in the midst of all of that, God Almighty will show himself strong on both sides of the aisle. Amen. 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 Yeah. Verse 7 says, for as he thinketh, in his heart, so is he. As he thinketh in his heart, so is he. So the way you think will determine what you believe about yourself. As he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat, drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. And one of the things you need to understand is we must paint a new picture of ourselves with the Word of God. I got to paint a new picture of myself with, the, with God's Word, not with my past, not with my mistakes, and not with my regrets. I paint a picture of myself with the Word of God. I refuse to accept my old image. And the devil will keep bringing your old image up. Every time you declare I'm the righteousness of God, he'll keep bringing it up. He wants you to see you, he wants you to see yourself according to your past. He wants you to see yourself according to your mistakes. He wants you to see yourself according to your regrets. And ladies and gentlemen, I, I know what I'm talking about right now. You have got to paint a new image with the Word of God so you can see yourself as God sees you through His Word. See yourself the way God sees you. See yourself the way God sees you. See yourself the way God sees you. You don't think it's important? i tell you how important it is. When you're at home by yourself and you're believing for God and you need a breakthrough, and all of a sudden you realize that that day you are spending more time seeing yourself based on what you used to do, what you did, because you're figuring, do I qualify it? Do I, does God even love me enough to do that? Just because you're not seeing yourself right. And you're viewing yourself in such a wrong way 
that you're not even giving yourself an opportunity for, to, to walk in the faith where you can believe God and know that you are a child of God, you are the righteousness of God by faith, and that your past and your past image will not stop you from, from achieving what God has put you here to achieve. Well, how do I see myself? Well, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17 says, see yourself as a new creature. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17, see yourself as a new creature. 1 Peter chapter 2, 24, see yourself as healed. So if sickness is on your, see yourself as healed. I see myself as healed, according to 1 Peter chapter 2, 24. Romans chapter 8, 37, Romans 8, 37, see yourself victorious. See yourself victorious. Let me do that again. See yourself as a new creature, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. See yourself healed, 1 Peter chapter 2, 24. See yourself victorious. I mean, right in the middle of a battle where everybody is saying there's no way you're going to win and you see yourself victorious. It is time for Christian people to start walking in such victory that we gain the attention of the world. Amen. 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 See yourself victorious. And then 2 Timothy 1, 7, my God hadn't given me a spirit of fear. See yourself fearless. See yourself fearless. Even when you sense that fear is there, see yourself fearless. You, 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 all, if you'll see yourself these way in, this, the way, in this way, in a sense, you're holding up a shield of faith. So when the opposite comes your way, it just keeps absorbing those arrows that are coming to try to knock you out of position where your identity is concerned, which then affects your behavior, and then it really affects how high you go. You ever heard your attitude determines your altitude? How high you go. And the perception that you carry in your life just draws a lot of things to you based on your perception based on how you see yourself. You walk around as a woman with low self-esteem, you're going to draw some kind of abusive guy because he sees that low self-esteem as well, an opportunity for him to try to take advantage of something. You see yourself. I, I mean, I love strong, I, I love strong women. I, 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 I have strong women. I have raised strong women. My heart goes out to, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the folks my kids date because I think you ain't going to make it. <laughs> you are absolutely too weak to be married to her because that ain't gonna last long, bro. That ain't got but like one time to happen and that's it. You've got to stop walking around and saying, I'm fat. I'll always be fat. I've got fat genes. I got fat cells and fat blood. And I got fat parents. <laughs> You got to stop seeing yourself that way. You got to stop talking about yourself that way. You got, don't measure yourself by a scale. Don't measure yourself by a mirror. Measure yourself by the way God sees you and what he says about you. Again, look at uh, Romans uh, 12, 2 and 3. It's, uh, you know, I want to look at verse 1. He says, I beseech you, Therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God that you present your bodies, there it is, a living sacrifice, holy, except, acceptable unto God, which is your what? Just reasonable service. Verse 2 and 3 is what I want to pay, which pay attention to. Verse 2 and 3 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you can prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Verse 3, For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Now, let's read this in the Amplified. I want to amplify verse, just verse 2 and 3 for you. <clears throat> this scripture is talking about and given the key to change. The Amplified verse 2 says, do not be conformed to this world, to this age. Don't be conformed to the fashions. You know, don't be fashioned after and adapted to its externals, and he calls it superficial customs. But be transformed, and it has in parentheses, changed, be changed. How, how, I want to change, how, I want to change, how, 
be changed. How? By renewing your mind, by the renewing of your mind. What does it mean to renew my mind? It is to exchange your thoughts, your ideas, your way of thinking for God's thoughts, his ideas, and his way of thinking. Literally, you're getting into the word and you're allowing that word to transform the way you think. And so he, you can change by the renewing of your mind. And renewing the mind, as I said before, is not a one-time event. It is a lifetime process. It is something that you do the whole time. You know, I used to think if a person just got born again, everything would change. And every one of us who've gotten born again, we now understand that everything did not change the day we got born again, right? But something supernatural happened when you got connected with a church and you started getting in the Word, understanding the Word, your thinking was being renewed, the ideas were being renewed, and then as a result of that, you notice change. You see, a lot of people in our families may think you're wasting your time here. But what they don't understand is that the more you hear from God's Word and the more you understand from God's Word begins a transformation in your whole life. And you look up one day and you're like, who am I? It's because of the Word that you're hearing. It's not because we came in, we did cartwheels, and, and we were flipping around and all that kind of stuff. It's because we came in, we sat down, and we, we opened our ears to hear. And we begin to hear something, and it got on the inside of us, and it challenged our old way of thinking, and it challenged our old ideas about something. And then Jesus came in and began to work on the inside of us. And who would have ever thought that just by simply coming and getting in a church where I can get the Word preached to me enough to go home and study that Word, that a change would take place. Amen. Woo, glory to God, that a change would take place. Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. And people want to change. I mean, I meet people every day. They want to change, praise God. And it's available. The entire renewing of your mind, the most important thing you can do as a human being on the planet is to get born again. But the most important thing you can do as a born-again Christian is to renew your mind. A whole lot of things that are not happening, that are not changing, the questions you have, I believe at the root of it all is being serious about a day-to-day -day renewing of your mind. Don't make it an event. It's a life. When you do something crazy, you know what it's saying? I need to renew my mind there. I, I need to renew my mind there. I'm not patient. I, I need to renew my mind there. You know, I fly off the handle. I need to renew my mind there. And if you miss it, the only thing you're saying, I need to renew my mind there. Let me go and get some scriptures. See, it makes sense to me now. I thought it was just a religious thing. But let me go get some scriptures concerning self-control so I can meditate on those things, read them, because obviously I need to renew my mind in that area. And he says, you're renewing your mind by its new ideas, its new attitudes. Look at verse 3. And this is so powerful. Why? This is so powerful. Why am I renewing my mind? Why am I renewing my mind? Why, why is that important for me as a Christian to renew my mind? You know, a person gets born again, and he thinks that takes care of his um, addiction. He thinks that takes care of his bad habits. He thinks that takes care of his lack of fruit of the Spirit. It doesn't. But as he starts renewing his mind, why? He says, in verse 3, For by the grace, God's unmerited favor, of God given to me, he says, I warn everyone among you not to estimate, not to think of himself more highly than he ought. So he says, don't go to the extreme. Don't think more highly than y'all, but don't even think more lowly. He's saying, I want you to think of yourself the way I'm telling you about who you are. And he calls that sober thinking. Sober thinking. Uh, he says, you, uh, among you not to estimate and to think of himself more highly than he ought not to have an exaggerated opinion of his own importance. That's so close to narcissism, isn't it? <laughs> he says, but to rate his ability with what? With sober judgment. Now look at verse 4, sober judgment. He says, for as, as in one physical body we have many parts, organs, members, and all of these parts, do not have the same function of use, and it goes down and talks about the uniqueness of who you are and all of the faith that has been given us to do what we need to do. I want to challenge you guys to reevaluate 
the process of renewing your mind in your life. Don't let that process stop. Don't, don't, don't go home and, and just kind of not get in the Word anymore like you used to. It's a valuable time to renew your mind and to see yourself the way God sees you. It's a valuable time for you to paint your image with the Word of God, to paint the perception of you, and it can be seen through God's Word. So, you got to stop seeing yourself just like when they talk about, I'm, I'm over-exaggerating these things because I really want you to see it. Stop seeing yourself as, as dumb. Well, I've always been dumb. You think I was dumb. My granddaddy was the dumbest person I've ever met before in my life. You know, when somebody tells you a joke, you know, I'm, I'm the last person to get it. I'm so dumb. I'm the last person that graduated. I'm just dumb. I'm the, la I'm the last person that passed that class and, and had to go through it three times. You got to stop seeing yourself that way. You got to stop talking about yourself that way. It's not funny. You, 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 you really believe that. If you just listen to what people say about themselves, they're just verbalizing and articulating what they really believe about themselves. And that perception is what's stopping a lot of things. You got to stop seeing yourself as a failure at home. I'm not really a good parent. I've tried, but I just don't know if I can raise my kids right. The devil tried to play that on me. And then I finally realized, you know what? My mom and daddy weren't no perfect parents. And I said, I ain't no perfect parents. And whatever I didn't do right, you're going to have to do what I did, trust in the Lord to, to, to help you out wherever you didn't get no help. But what I'm not going to do is walk around with the guilt and allow you to shame me, you who ain't never been a parent, to try to judge my parenting skills. I did the best I could. And what you couldn't get for me, you got a daddy. His name is Jehovah. And you're going to have to go to him just like I did. And he'll make it all right. Amen? Yeah. But I'm not going to let you shame me. I'm not going to shame myself. I'm not going to go around and tell oh, I was just a terrible parent because, you know, I was just trying to do what God wanted me to do and I just, Lord, forgive me. I ain't doing that. Okay, yeah, I did it. Can't go back and fix none of it. You need to go ahead and take advantage of me now because I'm really awesome now because I know more now than I did before. And you can't get no new daddy. You can get a pretend daddy, a sugar daddy, all them other kind of daddies, but you ain't gonna never gonna have a daddy like this. You understand what I'm saying? See, you've got to be careful not to allow somebody to project the wrong perception your way. It's like, I'm not gonna accept that. I'm not gonna accept that, you know. You, you know, shame, Satan loves using shame. Our society is filled with the technique of if you mess up, you're going to be shamed. I never thought I would see shame used as such a weapon right now. That's why you can't hardly find any good people to run for office because they don't want to have to go through the shaming process. I mean, it's just so ridiculous. It's like, you know, I can't run for office because, you know, I wasn't perfect. And neither will whoever you're running for office. Don't do that to yourself. Perception, man. It's, if, if we're going to change, if we're going to see change, we're going to have to make sure that we change our perception of our own selves. Stop seeing yourself as poor. Stop seeing yourself as poor. You know, I heard somebody say to me one time, I'm turning this thing off. This just ain't enough scripture. See, you got a serious issue. I'm not trying to use a lot of scriptures tonight. I'm talking to you. You know, sometimes you need a good talking to. You ain't changing no better if I give you 35 scriptures. I talk to you, and then I give you some, some scriptures to go with the next time we get together. But right now, you need a talking to. Perception is one of those things that people think is okay, and they're not understanding. Baby, you need to be honest about how you see yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And you need to change that with God's Word because that's stopping your transformation. God's trying to show you who you are, but you can't even hardly receive what he says about who you are, what he says about your identity, because you're perceiving 
based on the past and based on all the wrong things. It's time for real change. Eliminate bad habits that stunt your growth and embrace God's best for your life. It all starts by changing the way you think. God has so much that he wants to do for you. And he's trying to get you to see what he sees. And if you discover the grace over your life and the will of God for your life, you'll begin to see what God sees. This series taught me that change only happens when you renew your mind. But if you want godly change, you must renew your mind based on God's word and his grace. You can also receive today's full message for only $7. Or for $20, the New You Bundle helps you understand how to break mental strongholds and receive God's grace for change. This bundle includes both the Your New Life by Grace CD series and the How to Renew Your Mind CD series, all for just $20. Order now at creflodollarministries.org or call the number on the screen for more information. Do you ever feel yourself slowly becoming disconnected? Maybe from family, friends, even your spiritual relationship with God. In times where it's easy to feel anxious about the unknown, Grace Life Academy is here to serve you in areas you need in your life. Welcome to living in the no lack zone. With Grace Life Academy, you will have access to interactive Bible lessons that include features like e-courses, study guides, quizzes, and so much more. This easy to follow program offers unlimited access with hundreds of hours of online teachings from Creflo Dollar, where you can challenge yourself to grow in your understanding of God's grace. It's never too late to improve and develop a deeper connection to understanding God's word. And you can do that using just 15 minutes a day and joining Grace Life Academy. So what are you waiting for? Start your 30 day free trial today. Just text GLA to 51555 to get started right now or go online and visit mygracelifeacademy.com. The Bible teaches us to give generously with a cheerful heart, not out of necessity, but out of a cheerful heart. And that's why I'm so grateful for the friends and partners of this ministry who freely and cheerfully give financial offerings to support us. You understand our vision. You know that when people understand grace, they're empowered to change their lives for the better. Thank you for supporting us with your financial donations. And every time you give, you're being used by God to stop misfortune in someone else's life. And for that, we say thank you. God bless you. If you want to honor the Lord by sowing financial seeds into Creflo Dollar Ministries, call the number on your screen or log on to creflodollarministries.org. Sermon Songs is back, and this time we're getting face-to-face -face with our emotions. Sermon Songs Volume 4 is available now and features new music from Creflo Dollar featuring Jordan Dollar, including the hit singles Faith Strong, Faith Strong yeah, my Faith Strong and Joy. Visit www.sermonsongs.com to download and stream today. Thank you, partners and friends.